did you visit, you know, Tanzania first before you decided to move? Or how did the whole moving thing happen? No, um, I never visited Africa before I made it my home. Um, mm -hmm. The way it happened was, I guess about two years ago, I watched a Water Maya video. And okay. I was showing some, some beautiful places in Africa, which I had never seen before. And uh, I was fascinated. And uh, it made me want to do research. And I just kept researching and researching. I think I told you before, uh, Madagascar. Okay. I like, um, we, we just, I looked at all the different countries and, um, there was another YouTuber named Amon Ra. Maybe some of your okay. listeners may, he, we planned a trip. He planned a trip mm -hmm. April, April 30th of this year. Okay. I signed up, paid my money and everything. 10 day trip to uh, Nairobi. Okay. Nairobi and Mombasa, Kenya. He lived in Mombasa. Um, okay. African American living in Mombasa for 22 years. Wow. Before the trip happened, before the, trip happened the brother passed away. So the trip didn't happen. You know, it gave wow. us our money back and everything. And, but that didn't stop me. You know, I, I I still know I want to I want to go to Africa, and um, we're looking at the Gambia. Um, we chose Gambia, but at the time Gambia was not open, so we said okay. we can leave. So we go to Tanzania, we we'll hang out for a couple of months, then when it opens, we'll head over to Gambia. Mm -hmm. We met people, uh, found the orphanage, and. Mm -hmm. This is home. We're, 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 we're here now. We're not going to Gambia. If we go, it'll be to visit. But this is home now, right here. Wow. So so basically, you know, you did your research first because you had, yes. a, you, know, you, you had the zeal to actually visit the African continent based on, you know, watching YouTube videos. And you decided to travel. And, you know, you faced some challenges, but that didn't really stop you. You said, what? No matter what happened, I'm I'm still going. And then when you visited Tanzania, you know you realize, nah, nah, I'm not going anywhere because initially you wanted to go to Gambia, but right. guess what? The borders were closed, and you ended up in Tanzania, and you decided to stay. Now, I mean, there's a lot of African diaspora who wants to really move to the you know, African continent, especially West Africa. What really made you choose East Africa? I mean, I don't understand why, what, what really connected you to East Africa? Well, as I said before, once, once um, uh, I knew that Tanzania was open, I mm -hmm. watched a video of Traveling Sister. She said that the borders are open. You don't mm -hmm. need COVID tests, nothing like that. So I was like, this sounds like a good one. So I, I booked a ticket. Mm -hmm. um, we're supposed to leave Wednesday at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. Monday at 9 a.m. Traveling Sister did a video saying that the, the Minister of Health in Tanzania says you have to have a negative COVID test before entering the country and the test can be no older than 72 hours. Wow. Okay. Now I'm leaving, I'm leaving Wednesday. This is Monday. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was in New York City. So I'm running around now. I have to find somebody that can do this test and get it back to me ASAP. Because I don't have time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I went to one place that says it's gonna be two weeks. Can't do that. This one says it's gonna be three days. Can't do that. He gave us a number of one that we we could get in 24 hours. So we went there. Mm -hmm. They said it's one o'clock, one o'clock p.m. now, Monday. Mm -hmm. He said we can't guarantee twenty-four hours, but we'll get it back as soon as we can. Mm -hmm. okay. So we did the test. But by, by the way, the test was one hundred and fifty dollars each. It was three okay. of us. Okay. So we take the test. I call them the next day, Tuesday. Results not bad. 
Call us back in the morning. Wednesday, nine o'clock in the morning. They said, we have two of the tests back, but we're waiting on the third one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe 30 minutes later, she called me. We have the third one. Okay, so now we got to race over there, get the <laughs> result, because we got to right. get out of here. Right. And uh, I think we got, the, we got the results maybe about 11 o'clock. Our flight leave at 6. Wow. <laughs> okay. So that's how close it was. Wow. So we, we got the information. When we got to the airport, um, they asked for it one time. I want to okay. say when we were in New York, they asked to see it. Okay. And after that, they never asked again to see the paperwork. Okay. However, we saw a young lady in Qatar. She made mm -hmm. it all the way to Qatar. And they told her she didn't she have can't. the paperwork. She can't go further. Wow. Go no further. They turned her around. That's right. So you were basically fortunate. Well, I guess if you want to call it that, I mean, um, we would have had to cancel the flight if we didn't get the, the information back. So right, we're trying not to. We we're trying not to. And we were cutting it real close, but we made it. Wow, that's interesting. So basically, I mean, everything was bound to happen when you, when you pay attention to the details and the challenges you just you know went through. Everything was bound to happen because you you felt like you needed to do this, and maybe who you know who knows the universe just wanted to make it happen, and you just got everything in time on time, and then you know now you are in Tanzania. But in a long story short, you know so far how is just your experience? In Tanzania, Wonderful. been there for a month. Uh, actually, um, as I said before, it's a little bit over two months. Okay, mm -hmm. we got here August seventh. So what's the day like? The thirteenth. Mm -hmm. Thirteenth. So we're like um, maybe sixty-four days or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things that happened. I mean, when we got here, we we hit the ground running. You know, we 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 got into you know trying to do some airbnb and you know trying to help people out when they get here and right. um uh, we picked somebody a couple up from the airport uh, did you see that yeah yeah we picked a couple up from the airport uh, a couple of days ago i can't remember um and we we're just trying to help people that are coming you know okay. so that their experience may be easier mhm mm than I was, you know, we had some challenges, you know, but uh, we persevered, you know. I, I believe in the ancestors, you know, and I think they lead you and they won't lead you the wrong way. Right. But it wasn't it wasn't me saying that I should stay here in Tanzania. You know, uh, it was the ancestors saying, hey, listen, you stay, stay. right here. Right. So, so 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 this is this is my question, right? I'm still curious. I'm still curious. So you decided to visit Tanzania, right? Initially, that right. was your plan. Initially, right. that was your plan to visit. Right. Now, when you got to Tanzania, you know, you, you didn't know anybody over there. You just went and right. when you just when you just got there, you decided to retire in Tanzania. And now you got a place that you, you are renting, you are staying. How did you figure out all this when you don't know anybody? How how were you able to come up with this? Because I know you you really got to have a source to get all these things in place for you. Man, like, okay, we... The guy who picked us up from the airport, um, he was running for uh, NP, like... Uh, uh, with parliament, he was running for parliament, and you know, okay. we had a lot of conversation. After he picked us up from the airport, he took us to the bank to exchange money, he took us to uh, get our cell phone, you know, and and then we I think we had a little breakfast, mm -hmm. and eventually he took me to my Airbnb. Mm -hmm. When I got to the Airbnb, there was a young man there to, to greet me. Uh, mm -hmm. It was his friend's Airbnb. 
Okay. And he opened the door for me and showed me around and stuff. And he said, uh, anything you need, I'll be here. I'm just a couple of minutes away. And, you know, that weekend, he, you know, we got there Friday. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We're supposed to leave Monday. Okay. Uh, from the Airbnb. And we liked it. So since he knew the brother, we talked to him. And we arranged to stay there for three months at the same location. And over that weekend, this guy is calling me dad, calling my wife mom. Huh. I'm not, you know, we're not used to this kind of stuff, you know. And yeah. as time went on, hell, I started calling him son. Okay. And long story short. He's 29 years old. He's my son now. He's got a room in my home, you know? Yeah. So when I left the Airbnb, I took him with me. Okay. Also, I have a daughter um, who was, at that time, was supposed to be maybe a, the helper at the Airbnb or whatever. Same mm -hmm. thing. We bonded. 19-year-old uh, daughter uh, getting ready to just start college next month. She also has a, a room in my home. Things are done different here. Family is real family, okay? Doesn't necessarily have to be blood now. Right. Doesn't necessarily have to be blood, okay? And even though I've only known these individuals for 60 days, we love each other, you know? I made a commitment to them. I told this girl, hey, I'm going to make sure you're all right in college. Don't worry about a thing. I'm, my wife and I are going to fly. It's like maybe 15 hours away if we were to drive where she's going mm -hmm. to college, so we decided we're going to go ahead and fly. We're going to fly mm -hmm. over, drop her off, you know, hang out with her for a couple of days, make sure she's situated in the dorm and everything, right? And then we're mm -hmm. going to fly back. We're going to fly back. Uh, wow. It was supposed to be just my wife and I. Now we got like, my 82-year-old father-in-law. He's here. He said, look here, he got to go. So he says, you know, y'all not going without me. I have to go too. He's going, and now my son he want to go, so everybody's going. So, mm -hmm. so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Sure. Uh, um, you know, coming from the U.S., I know the culture yeah. is very different, right, from both sides. Yeah. Now, yeah. for the past one month being in Tanzania, how are you really assimilating with the local people? Like, how is the culture differences and how are you catching up? You know, is it, you know, because most people say, well, I don't, I don't know how to speak the language. I don't know this. I don't know that. I don't think I'll fit in in any African country. Now you fall in the same category. You don't know how to speak the language. You don't know anything about the culture, but finally you, you did it. How are you really adjusting with the whole uh, um, or culture differences? Well, it's a lot easier for me because I have my son and my daughter. You know, mm -hmm. they, they both speak Swahili, so it's not a problem. And they're teaching me Swahili also. Mm -hmm. And they both speak English, uh, but there are things about America that they don't know. I'm teaching okay. them about America. They're teaching me about Tanzania. So it's a win-win, you know? And believe me, this is something that the West never wanted to see happen, okay? Continental Africans and Diasporans getting together. They never wanted to see this happen. Well, it's too late. It's happening now. You can't stop it now. It's happening. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you this. There, there's a lot of people who ask me questions like, oh, is it safe, you know, for, for me to be in Africa? Because, you know, I've had a lot of things happen over there, you know, coming from the U.S. and living in Tanzania right now. How do you feel when it comes to safety? Okay. I'm going to make this story kind of long, okay? Because it, it's right with what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. There's another brother that's, uh, we have like, I think you know we have like separate quarters in my home. Like you have the main house and then you have other places outside it. Mm -hmm. With the property. Anyway, the lady that owns this house, she called me and asked me, could her brother stay here for a while he's coming to town he's he's from norway he's from mm -hmm. here but he's been living in norway okay i said sure 
I said, sure. All right. This guy and myself, we're walking down the street at night. It's like maybe nine o'clock. There's these mm -hmm. two guys that are across the street. And they, they came on our side of the street. And they started walking behind us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you know how it go, right? So I'm like, you know. <laughs> yeah, right? looking back over your shoulders. You know, yeah. Why are these guys walking behind us, you know? And then they finally, they passed us up. So I, I said, your brother's name is I too. I said, I do. Man. I said, you can't do that in America, man. You can't be walking behind people like that. Mm -hmm. Not that yeah. close. Not mm -hmm. that close. Close. He said, oh, it's no problem. It's no problem. He said, come on. You know, and those guys never, they never paid attention to us. Mm-hmm. So in saying that, yeah, you're safe. You're very safe. You're very safe. Wow. Woman, women walk down the street late at night. Nobody's going to bother you. Nobody's going to bother you. I go to the bank, you know, make my little withdrawal, and, you know, I walk out the bank. I'm not, I'm not looking around. No. Nah. Because we don't mm -hmm. have that problem. Problem. And it's so security everywhere, man. Security is everywhere. 